Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Tech Talk. I'm at Dashtal Park, one of the UK's leading centres for technological innovation and a focal point for the country's 5G development. To help me understand some of the key advancements in the mobile space, I'm joined by Adva's Anthony McGee and BT's Richard McKenzie. Anthony, before we start looking at some of the technology around us, can you tell me where Adva fits in the mobile ecosystem? Okay, so for Adva, 5G is much more than a radio standard. It's about an end-to-end -end network capability. And for that, it requires that rather than just a radio, it needs a very capable transmission and transport network, which is the part of the network that connects from the cell site into the core network, wherever that may be. So to do that, we're actually bringing our technology tripod, which is connectivity, synchronization, and network function virtualization to the network. So you're covering a lot of ground here. People might not expect that of Adva. Absolutely. So for the 5G network, the mobile operators, um, they're looking for improved densification, better coverage. And in order to do that, they're looking to simplify the network. So they're looking at different architectures, and those architectures are becoming very much spread over different parts of the network. So if you think about, say, for example, the adoption of cloud services in 5G, that needs a, a, a network function virtualization capability. But at the same time, you need to synchronize the radios very precisely. So the transport network has to be capable of delivering that synchronization service, the phase alignment to the radios, aggregating at 10 and 25 gigabit per second into 100 gigabit per second transport pipes, and then applying the cloud-based technologies to that. And from what I understand, you're going beyond just delivering the technology, you're also involved in, in the standards? Absolutely, so there's a, as, as mobile operators and, and carriers are looking at disaggregation, the concept of splitting up the standard, taking the baseband unit apart, um, is actually being delivered by various standards bodies, including TIP and also ORAN. Um, and Adverse Police have announced that we've actually joined ORAN. And we're doing this because we want to bring a, a level of maturity on the transport network to the all-round agenda. Richard, bringing you into the conversation now, you're heavily involved in the ORAN Alliance. Can you tell us why this project is so important to the industry? Absolutely. So for 5G or just for the f anything in the future with our, with our mobile network, we need to provide a wide range of services. And so we need a more flexible and reconfigurable mobile network. Um, and the O-Run or Open Run architecture enables us to do that. Um, so there's a, there's a few key elements there. First of all, it's virtualization. We're turning radio functionality into software functions so it can be more easily and quickly reconfigured. Um, to ensure that we can actually achieve that virtualization and flexibility, we need to make sure that it's based on a hardware platform um, that can be used by a wide range of, um, of software providers. Um, so that's a key part of of this architecture. And then finally, it's the actual physical disaggregation. So that's actually splitting the base station from one, one single element into several components. And those components can be placed around the network based on the type of service we want to provide. So to actually achieve that vision of an open run ecosystem, there's two key industry groups. So there's the Telecom Infra Project, TIP, and we've been heavily engaged with them. And there's also ORAN, who are heavily engaged with too. And the, the important role that ORAN takes is they are the standards body. So they are actually defining those open interfaces for an open RAN ecosystem. Now, Richard, one of the reasons we're at Adastral Park is that this is the home of a ORAN POC that you're developing. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely, it's um, ORAN POCs. There's, there's lots of things we're doing. Um, so over the last few years, we've been working with TIP, we've got an, an a TIP community lab um, just at the other side of the site and we've been developing proof of concepts um, with Adva's support. Um, what we want to do now is we want to take that step beyond being in the lab and demonstrating proof of concepts. We want to get outside and show these radio solutions working over the air. So we're building a new cluster of small cells around the site and we're going to be demonstrating open RAN solutions um, providing a range of different 5G um, and open RAN services. And how are Adver and BT collaborating in this space? So, as I've said already, the, um, in the POCs in the TIP Community Lab, Adver have already been supporting us there um, and they've been helping us with the transport. 
and transport plays a crucial role in open RAN. Because we've disaggregated the RAN, the transport now plays a very crucial role in, in actually making sure that those components coordinate properly. Um, so they've helped us there with realistic transport in our community lab. They're now going to help us get realistic transport in our over-the-air um, outdoor test bed. We've now moved to one of the key areas of the POC. Anthony, can you tell us a little bit about what we can see behind us here? Sure, so what we have is we've got a small cell on top of the lamppost here, and there's going to be six of those small cells around the site. Um, at each location, we're putting in a transport solution that allows BT to swap and change their radio depending on which part of the POC they're actually trying to prove out. And they can also make changes to the transport solution as well. So as an example, we've got different gateways that could be used. There's the one that's on the outside of the lamppost here. It's handing over power over ethernet, synchronization and connectivity to the small cell. And there's also a small cell gateway that lives inside the lamppost in case it needs to be hidden away to avoid street clutter. Fantastic. Anthony, thanks for joining us today. Thank you.